Hello. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance. Diabetes. Now, these th these two things probably don't have a huge role by uh, magnesium and vitamin D, but I just happened to be watching this guy's videos the other day. I find it really strange that all of the whenever you type in into the YouTube uh, anything about magnesium or anything about vitamin D. It's all the keto folks, like everybody that does keto, like the, you know, the high, high end, you know, the Bergs and the whatever's the, the, the Lauer, they're all talking about these things, but I did find it interesting and hopefully I can find it within this video. This guy right here, this doctor was talking about how magnesium affects uh, insulin sensitivity. Anyway, my name is Ryan. This is High Carb Regenerator. Welcome to my channel. Let's uh, get started. Pigeon some where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today now, when I did talk about this in my live, which was yesterday, a lot of people were like, well, isn't there a ton of magnesium in the food? And it just doesn't seem that way because when I added uh, magnesium into my diet, uh, things I actually noticed quite a bit of difference, you know, especially with the digestion and sleep was better too. Today we're going to talk about magnesium. Oh. And after uh, cycling, I did not have any muscle cramps, uh, hardly at all, where prior to taking magnesium, I mean, my, especially my left uh, hamstring, you know, set, they really would cramp like Charlie horse. Uh, but once I started taking magnesium, they didn't, they didn't anymore. Magnesium, the forgotten mineral. Oftentimes when we talk about minerals, we often think about calcium. Calcium from bone health, osteoporosis, and so forth. Magnesium is kind of a missing piece when it comes to mineral uptake. So let's go into how we discover if we have magnesium deficiency. I would venture to guess that a lot of us do. I mean, it's not, it's not one of them things where if you take too much, it's going to be harmful. You're probably just going to have to go to the bathroom and you kind of just knew you took too much. Now, when they look for, although there is such a thing as magnesium toxicity, I don't want, you know, I don't want the extremists coming in here and saying, well, blah, 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 you know, just shooting out, you know, of course, the, you know, there, there's a 1% of a 1% that could have toxicity, which isn't good either. Or magnesium in your regular blood work, it says magnesium. That's serum magnesium. And that's not a great indication of what. Oh, and somebody asked me about the blood test yesterday. Here it is. So if you get nothing else out of this video, make sure you rewatch what he's saying here, because this is the test you got to do on your blood uh, when you get blood tests done. What your mag magnesium levels are. If you're going to check for magnesium, you want to check it in the red blood cell magnesium. That would give you a better read of what's going on. Also, with so if you're going to like maybe even save this video if you're going to go to the doctor and say like this is the one i want run that way you can actually see if you have enough magnesium in your system magnesium there are a lot of little subtle clinical signs that might indicate you have magnesium deficiency so we like to go over some of the signs and symptoms and then we'll go into what forms might be the best and what i use in my office to help patients okay so essentially <clears throat> mineral, uh, essential mineral, which is a cofactor in over 300 enzymatic processes or reactions, right? It's involved in protein synthesis, muscle contraction. Protein, protein. But, you know, like us vegans, right? We don't actually get a ton of protein because you don't need a ton of protein. So whatever protein you have, if you can't uptake it, then it's, you know, it's not going to do you any good. Nerve function, blood pressure, hormone binding, and other things. There's a lot of them, right? Because there's over 300 enzymatic processes that magnesium is involved in. Now, some clinical signs and symptoms of deficiency. And I probably won't make it through this whole video, right? Because I'm going to uh, skip over to the vitamin D one. I will link these down below. This guy actually has got a lot of good information. Muscle cramping, usually at night. Sleep disturbances. Stress and anxiety, right? You feel wired and tired and you know, highly stressed, right? High blood pressure is also another clinical sign. And then you're going to have 
constipation for some people because you need magnesium for muscle uh, motility and, and contraction in the colon. And then you could have another thing. If you do take calm, do I have it linked down below. If I can figure, I, if I haven't used my Amazon uh, affiliate thing in a long time. If I remember, um, I will look into uh, call, uh, linking calm down below in my uh, affiliate link. I think I get like a few, a few, not dollars, yeah, right, like a penny or two. Uh, but it's the one that I take. It's the one I like the most. Uh, but if you do take too much, you're going to be on the toilet and you're going to be mad at me. So just start off slow. Have some people who have fatigue, heart palpitations, or some people who have AFib or atrial fibrillation, cognition, and then headaches, things like migraine and so forth. So there are a lot of little clinical signs and tips here of a possible magnesium deficiency. Now, when we look at the different forms of magnesium, there are a lot of them, and let's just go into some of what the research says, okay, in terms of magnesium. So there's magnesium as... I don't know if he talks about it in this video now that I think about it. All right, I'm going to cut here. I'll be right back. Uh, let me try and see if there's another video. All right, I'm back. Um, this is the only other video I watched on magnesium, so if it's not in here, it's in the other one. I'll link them down, both down below. Go check them out. I'll watch this for a little bit. Uh, this one's only like five minutes long, so it shouldn't, you know, be that big a deal. Hey, it's Lisa, registered dietitian with Healthline, and today I'm going to talk to you all about why getting enough magnesium is so important. Mag like totally. Magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in our bodies, and it's involved in hundreds of different reactions that are happening all the time, including nervous system regulation, energy formation, protein synthesis, and more. But about 50% of people aren't getting enough magnesium. It's got to be because you're vegan, man. Not getting enough magnesium is associated with high blood pressure, heart disease, and sleep problems. So today we're going to learn about why it's so important, lots of benefits benefits of getting enough magnesium, foods that are rich in magnesium, and what you should consider if you're looking into supplements. Studies show that magnesium can help reduce blood pressure levels, blood sugar levels, cholesterol levels, and fasting blood sugar levels. Magnesium may help improve your exercise performance. Your body needs 100% improves uh, exercise performance, 100%. I'm telling you, when I added that stuff in, my cycling definitely improved. It's more magnesium during exercise, and it's thought that the mineral helps your muscles take up blood sugar and prevents lactate from building up, which can cause fatigue. You may especially notice benefits of magnesium for exercise performance if you're older or already deficient in magnesium. Research has been mixed for people who have normal... This video had to have taken forever to edit. I really probably should get my uh, stuff up to this level magnesium levels, but if you want to improve your performance, it may be a good place to start. Magnesium is very important for brain health and may help reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety. Magnesium is a key mineral for helping manage your blood sugar. People who have higher levels of magnesium are less likely to develop type 2 diabetes. And in people who diabetes. Diabetes. already have type 2 diabetes, they're more likely to be deficient in magnesium. It's thought that magnesium enhances your insulin sensitivity and helps there you go. Yeah, there, I knew I knew I seen somebody say it, right? I'm going to have to cut this here because I already have a feeling that I'm going to have to cut this out of the video to keep it on YouTube. Anyways, um, this is where I wanted to use Patreon. This is where, but, uh, you know, maybe I, maybe I need to make like a $2 Patreon where I, I just post videos like this. Let me know if you'd actually be interested in that because I, there are videos that I would really like to make. But I just, I know I can't because you could, YouTube will just take it down. So I'm going to be done with that one. But that really interests me because I, I always refer back to 2016. I know, I, I know, I get it. I get it. I talk about it all the time. But something caused me to have the ability to just shed weight like crazy and i wasn't raw vegan when i'm raw vegan it just sheds like crazy no matter what but i was having magnesium last year 
So maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe maybe some people who are really struggling to lose weight because I watch some people like some people in my comment section are like, you know, I um I lost a ton of weight doing what you said, you know, like I just can't even keep it on, uh, you, you know, and then there's others like I and I and the people flarts go in my DMs. Oh, uh, it just doesn't work that way. And I'm trying to figure out what the hell the reason for that is. So I'm going to link these two videos down below. Um, uh, there is actually a huge link between magnesium and vitamin D. He talks about that. This is a an hour and three minute video. This is like every video he's ever done on vitamin D. I'm obviously not going to watch it uh, for that long, but uh, check this out. It's really interesting because anybody, anybody in a certain like hemisphere, basically from if you're watching this in the States or, or whatever, wherever you are, if you're in certain areas of the world, there are certain times a year for like here, for example, I think it's November 1st to maybe April 1st or something like that. You could stand out in the sun all day long and you're not going to get enough vitamin D because the sun is at the wrong angle. It's depending on what angle the sun is at. Uh, so you're not going to get it. So, you you know, it, it, it just so you got to watch this stuff. But magnesium and vitamin D and vitamin K, too, are extremely linked together. Tissues. But take note right here. Those are lung. Right. Uh, I, I fast forward. I probably should have done a little bit more. This is him talking about the testing. This is very interesting. Go check it out for yourself if you're interested in this sort, sort of thing. I was more interested in the insulin resistance uh, part of it, and then um, I'm just, that's that's cells, the video. Right? If you have lung cells that are responsible for taking vitamin D in active forms to active forms, think about it. If you take vitamin D, your lungs are healthier. Therefore, it can fight off infections into the lungs. Right? Let me say that again. If you take vitamin D, you can impact the immune system of the lungs and the oxygenation and carbon dioxide uh, removal. So it's very important for things like COVID, right, or influenza or viruses, right, or pneumonia. It's very important. Now, what can negatively impact vitamin D or negatively impact the absorption of vitamin D? This is why I say to test your vitamin D and up here, watch this. I, like I said, before you go to your doctor or bring this video th that I made right here, cause it's a lot shorter than his, uh, to your doctor and, you know, show them this so they can, you know, know what to do. GI dysfunction, right? Gastrointestinal dysfunction. But anyway, 25, uh, vitamin D. Th these are the ones that you want to test. Age. As we age, our kidney function may not be as good. Our lung function may not be as good. So it can impact the conversion. Skin type, right? Darker skin tends to absorb less of the uh, UVBs. So skin type, where you live, location, right? If you live in Florida versus here in the yeah, exactly. If you live in Florida, you probably don't even uh, need to even bother with this, but other than magnesium. Northeast your uh, sun exposure is going to be different. And also the angle of the sun hitting you is going to be different. Therefore, your vitamin D levels can be impacted. Bile. If you have your gallbladder removed or, or you have liver dysfunction, right, and you don't have enough bile, it's going to impact the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, in this case, vitamin D. Insulin resistance, metabolic issues, Autoimmune disease will suck up your vitamin D. And there's another um, a little talked about. I don't think he really expands on this too much, but that's interesting to me. So if you have low vitamin D, maybe you're, uh, you're, you're insulin resistant. You know, maybe uh, by supplementing it, it'll help you out. A case of polymorphisms where you have vitamin D receptor issues, right? Because of genetic problems. So there's a polymorphism issue, right? So we look at this and we say, hmm, we know we need vitamin D to impact our overall health, right? What is the proper level, right? What is the uh, recommended dosages, et cetera? It's very important to understand this portion of it.
Okay. Unfortunately, that's all. <laughs> it just just barely mentions it. Um, but I, I find this very interesting. I find this extremely interesting because last year, before I started taking the sugar to up my levels of uh, T4 and testosterone and all that kind of, you know, all the hormones, basically, um, my vitamin D was down to a six. Now that all my levels are coming up, my vitamin D was at a 39. That's a huge difference. And I keep forgetting to even supplement vitamin D. <laughs> I suck. I suck at <laughs> remembering the, to take any of this stuff. So that that is a huge issue if you want to take it. But even with me forgetting to take it, it was still at a 39. And last year when I was taking it every day, um, I was still so really insulin resistant. So it was only at a six. I find this to be an interesting topic. Unfortunately, that's all he talks about with this, uh, unless there's more in this hour and three minute video. I have no idea, um, but I don't want to try to hold an attention for that long. So um, I, like I said, I'll link these down below. Go check them out. Uh, this is, you know, he does have these boards that he writes on, so you're going to want to maybe look at it once in a while, but this is definitely something that you can listen to uh, while you're doing other things and get the information, but I do think it's very valuable. Now, if you're watching this and you are in Florida or California or Arizona or Texas, probably not terribly relevant, but the magnesium might be. Anyways, uh, food literally for thought. Hopefully this did you some good. Uh, leave comments, questions down below. Uh, anything else, you know, like, subscribe, like always, share the video, and I'll talk to you in the next one.